Hey, welcome to my video on the succession crisis that rocked the kingdom of Westeros. In this video I will be covering how the conflict began after King Viserys I passed away, the warring factions, the significant events that followed, and the political and economic aftermath. So get your popcorn ready, we are about to dive right in. As I said, this all began with the death of King Viserys I. He was the head of the royal family of Westeros, but he unfortunately died without a clear-cut heir. It was expected that his eldest child would inherit the throne but some thought otherwise. A cast of characters then presented their claims to the Iron Throne of Westeros, thus leading to much drama and many questions. To understand the conflict better, let's look at the history and background. First, let's talk about the life of King Viserys Warn. Though his reign only lasted for a few fleeting years, he mustered up great admiration from his people. He was married to Rhaenyra, and together they had seven children. So at first, it seemed obvious as to who should take the throne, but it soon turned out there was more to the story. Up next I'm going to be breaking down all the factions of claimants to the throne. Who can forget the drama of Viserys's children who, each believing they had the right to the throne, waged war against each other? On the other hand, there were others who also claimed the title, of which we will discuss in the next section. But before we get stuck in, I'd really appreciate it if you can like the video. Only takes a second and really does help me out a lot. With that out of the way, let's get into it. King Viserys' marriage ceremony to Rhaenyra was one of the most lavish and extravagant events of the Westerosan monarchy. Many envoys were present from all over the continents. Although his reign was short, the two were praised for the way they were running the kingdom. The king had seven children, Aegon, Aemond, Demon, Jaehaerys, and Jaehaerys, Reyna, and Viserys, who were all scattered around the different Westerosan cities during their father's lifetime. He also maintained strong relations with all the bars of Westeros. This resulted in the kingdom being stable and not affected by major wars. He was mostly proud of his two eldest children Aegon and Aemond, who he hoped would one day take the crown. However, once his wife Rhaenyra died, Viserys could not carry the burden of ruling and the kingdom became damaged. Eventually, King Viserys Y died without a clear heir in despair. This led to chaos across Westeros, and all the possible successors of the king rose to challenge the throne. This so-called succession crisis was the beginning of what would soon become a long and bloody conflict. The other claimants to the king's throne were Viserys' two eldest children, Aegon and Emond, and their respective followers. All were vying for the Iron Throne, hoping to gain the power, real estate, and resources that came with the position. Along with the two brothers, there were also a strong number of lesser members of the royal family whose claims were put forth. They included the young children of Rhaenyra, Demon Targaryen, Jaehaerys Targaryen, Jaehaerys Targaryen, and the youngest Reyna Targaryen, each believing that they had just as much claim to the throne as Viserys' eldest children. The other claimants to the throne came from within the Westerosan houses of nobility. Estimates range from up to 24 lords and ladies who wished to challenge the throne. Extremely powerful houses such as the Lannisters, Greyjoys, Arryns, and Mormonts all had an obligation to recognize a claim to the Iron Throne. Other houses such as the Martells and Starks had internal divisions within their families and were uncertain as to how to approach either Viserys' children or their own faction's claimant. The claims to the throne were partly based on prestige of nobility, with attention to the individual's line of succession and lineage. Some of the minor houses had little to no claim to the throne, but still persisted in their attempts to overthrow Viserys's children. They thought that aligning with any of the more powerful houses would offer them an opportunity to become part of the Iron Throne. The competition for the Iron Throne and Westeros's future had begun. Viserys' children held strong claims to the throne and were favored by much of Westeros, the eldest two, Aegon and Emond, were considered by many to be the rightful heirs in spite of the other claimants. Aegon and Emond were in their late twenties and had years of training and experience in the feudal hierarchy of Westeros. Though the siblings did not have the same level of militaristic training, they had grown up surrounded by the small councils of their father and his vassals. They also had access to resources that not all of their competitors had, and they intended to use them to gain the throne. Aegon and Emond quickly gathered a number of powerful followers to their cause and created a strong coalition of lords and ladies loyal to them. While the strength of their coalition was undeniable, there were still some who had doubts about the claims. 
Notable among those doubters were House Tyrell, who supported Rhaenyra and her children and House Baratheon, who believed that their own claim was the most valid. Nonetheless, Aegon and Aemon still remained favored among many due to their birth as the rightful children of King Viserys I. Aegon and Aemon had also each taken up their own resources, creating a separate alliance with Dorne and the Iron Islands each. These alliances allowed the two siblings to simultaneously energize their own forces and bring in more followers who were willing to fight for the right to control Westeros and succeed King Viserys I. Of course, these alliances had the potential to fracture if their various interests differed, but in the short term, they proved to be quite beneficial to the siblings and their cause. Other claimants to the Iron Throne included House Baratheon, House Tyrell, and House Greyjoy. House Baratheon had the advantage of having the strongest military force and could draw on the support of several powerful Stormlords, such as the Lords of the Stormlands, who had the potential to prove decisive in the war for succession. Though the claim of House Tyrell was perhaps not as powerful as that of House Baratheon, their influence was still tangible. Lady Marguerite, wife of King Viserys' grandson, had made a reputation of herself as a shrewd and resourceful ally, and House Tyrell still held sway over much of the Reach. House Greyjoy was a bit of an outlier compared to the other claimants, as they controlled an island far away from the mainland of Westeros, and had less of a connection to the Iron Throne than the other claimants. That being said, their claim to the throne was not invalid, and their allegiance could have potentially shifted the balance of power in the struggle for succession. The Greyjoys had already demonstrated their military prowess through rebellions in the past, and they had sufficient naval power should they decide to support one of the other claimants. Finally, there were also numerous figures from both nobility and lowborn backgrounds who had also made claims to the Iron Throne. Several distant Targaryen relatives had also put forward their claims to the throne, such as Demon Waters and Laenor Valerion. Others, such as Michael Redford, had managed to sway some support behind their own cause. However, these figures lacked resources and time to prove themselves. Thus, while the majority of Westeros argued between the claims of House Baratheon, House Tyrell, and Aegon, and Eamon Targaryen, there were other claimants and figures in the mix whose influence could decide the fate of the Iron Throne. The ongoing conflict that arose after King Viserys's death had undoubtedly caused much destruction and destruction to the entire Seven Kingdoms. Hostilities between the warring factions caused frequent skirmishes, raids, and sieges that left many without food, shelter, and security. In the resulting chaos, bandits and outlaws became rampant, and the level of law and order plummeted across the land. The economic impact of the succession crisis was also considerable. The destruction of crops and other resources in skirmishes, raids, and sieges resulted in shortages that exacerbated hunger and poverty levels in Westeros. Trade routes were disrupted and markets shut down, further impacting the economy. Not to mention, the cost of financially sustaining the armies of each faction quickly added up, resulting in a significant burden for local economies. The destruction of civil infrastructure and disruption of trade routes led to a weakened Westerosi economy that was unable to bounce back from the collapse of the Iron Throne. This, coupled with the short-sightedness and selfishness of different factions to achieve their own ends, resulted in a rapid decline in the standard of living of those living Westeros. Many of those affected by the succession crisis were left in a situation of poverty, instability, and lawlessness. The political fallout of the succession crisis was also evident. Without an heir to the Iron Throne, Westeros was embroiled in turmoil and chaos. Different factions either refused to acknowledge any other claimant or sought to ally with conflict to their advantage, resulting in a highly fragmented political landscape. With the Iron Throne weak and crippled, foreign powers that had previously respected Westeros' independence now sought to take advantage of the situation and meddle in their politics. This political meddling increased tensions between the Seven Kingdoms and abroad, leading to international conflict between Westeros and other nations. The weakened Iron Throne also invited attack from more ambitious powers, leading to a cycle of wars and invasions from across the seas. This instability meant that the Westerosi could not depend on the support of other nations, and were instead thrust into the domains of hostile invaders. The legacy of the succession crisis was also felt internationally. The various wars and skirmishes between the different claimant factions had caused much suffering and destruction beyond the walls of Westeros. This created a negative reputation of the Westerosi people, and served to damage existing international relations. 
The reputation of the continent was further tarnished by the political machinations of warring factions who vainly sought to bolster their own power and sought foreign allies in their cause. The chaos that arose after the death of King Viserys further cemented a fragile geopolitical landscape in Westeros, with the Iron Throne weak and crippled, and the Westerosi people fractured by their own divisions. They were unable to repel powerful invaders and lived in a perpetual state of uncertainty. This had a lasting effect on Westeros, as the instability and divisions across the continent weakened the Iron Throne and left Westeros vulnerable to attack from foreign forces. The succession crisis of King Viserys marked a significant turning point for the Seven Kingdoms, leading to a period of instability and civil war. The conflict represented a major breakdown of governance, with a power vacuum and the raging wars produced by the various claimant factions. The war and civil disorder weakened the kingdom dramatically, with long-lasting political and economic consequences for the people of Westeros. The legacy of the succession crisis was far-reaching, and its repercussions still linger today. Much of the political mayhem and disarray was caused by the turbulent wars which ensued in the wake of King Viserys' death. The economic cost of the conflict was considerable, with a weakened Iron Throne and disrupted trade and business relations. The impact on international relations were far-reaching too, with a distrust of the Westerosi people and the Iron Throne, and a resulting recalcitrance to form strategic alliances. The succession crisis of King Viserys demonstrated the fragility of Westerosi politics, and how quickly a kingdom can plunge into chaos. Despite the devastating consequences, it is important to remember the legacy of Viserys and his reign. His legacy of courage and strength and leadership live on, even as Westerosi politics remain as unpredictable as ever. If you learned something from this video, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps keep this content coming. Thanks for watching.